Well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing well. For those that look like a bunch of ski bums in the audience, that's good. And I agree with going home, my wife's going to say, yeah, you really worked. I can tell. So anyway, uh, Jason Deeds from Federal Highway. Um, I've been working for the Resource Center now for nine years. And when I first started, my predecessor basically kind of left with a kind of a a bad taste in his mouth that said, you know, Federal Highway, we need to do more on the leadership at our headquarters office to really make this preservation go. And since the start of it until where I am now, I think we have progressed, but like any agencies, you know, things don't happen overnight. It takes some time. And with a bunch of group of fellows that I'm going to introduce here in my presentation, we have worked together. We have created a strategic plan on where we see the future, as David mentioned, where we're looking at it in the future when it comes to preservation, and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about. And I guess I had it automatic and it jumps right to the first slide. Well, as Latoya mentioned on the first day, um, we, we correct, we, uh, we, we internally in our headquarters office and our Turner Fairbanks office and our Federal Highway Resource Center office, we created these PACs. Program Area Collaboration Teams. Like many agencies, there's a lot of stove pipes within an agency of who does what. But this was one way that we were able to get everybody together and to look and focus on what are the specifics that we really want to get out in these different areas. And as you can see in this next, this next little bullet that I'm going to put in red, that's where we are on pavement preservation and rehabilitation. Each one of these groups are asked to uh, provide some kind of strategic plan. And with that strategic plan, that just makes us overall as an agency better inclined of what we are going to be doing and how we're planning for the future. So I just wanted to mention that, and I won't get into the details on definitions because we're currently working on that. Um, there are about nine agencies across the country that have agreements on what preservation is with that agency um, and with the division office. We don't have a CFR requirement that dictates what states need to do for preservation. However, we do have agreements from the divisions with the states on what definitions are, what they call preservation, and that really helps. And currently, we're, we are working together on a template to provide some of those agencies that don't have agreements to work on something like that because that is a stepping stone in a planning stage that I believe as a communication tool for an agency um, to really plan accordingly when it comes to preservation. And for those agencies that have a strategic, that have an agreement, you can really see that their program in preservation has gone to the next level. And then again, I can't say enough about keeping good roads good because that's what we are trying to do. And again, here's a PAC definition of what we call pavement preservation because in our definitions that we have, we talk about just preservation. To make it more complicated, uh, we have to say pavement preservation. But as most of us know, that involves maintenance. And in tune, Federal Highway has changed our philosophy on maintenance. And we are also working on a strategic plan on maintenance as well. And we are really looking forward to that to move forward. And again, here's the collaboration team. I kind of lead this group, but again, it's just not me. It's the collaboration with all these folks from our headquarters office on the left to our uh, highway research folks in the middle, and then to our division offices that work with the states. We have Dennis Bachman that's here today. We have Matt Schmitz from Montana. We have our central federal lands, Mike Voth, and then Steve Cooper from our resource center as well. In our strategic plan in 2019 and 22, it talked about the uh, really kind of stated what our preservation was going to be, and that was good. Um, Latoya mentioned the other day that in our updated strategic plan, there was a few words, but it wasn't as drastic as it, it wasn't as more informative as this one was. But we do, along with our strategic plan, that helps um, really move the effort when it comes to preservation within our agency. And if you want further information, there's a website, it's probably pretty small, where you can go to on what that strategic plan, where you can find that at. So as in every agency, uh, you have to establish a role. 
And with that role, um, our main purpose is a policy and leadership. And our headquarters office does most of the policy. And the leadership uh, kind of comes with me as in the resource center, providing technology transfer, training, also looking at specifications, providing assistance to the agencies when it comes to preservation. We also have to do some kind of demonstration about the economics and social environmental impacts. And that's currently what we're working on. As we've been told through our headquarters office, that we need to start looking at as sustainability has grown with this new leadership in our headquarters in DC. Uh, sustainability is a big effort, along with some of these other equity and some of these other things that they're asking us to look more into, and we are doing that. And then also we want to conduct and sponsor research activities when it comes to preservation treatments, and I'll talk about that as we go. But one thing I want to mention on the bottom, this kind of shows you some of the things that we have done over the last four to five years when it comes to preservation. We had our Everyday Counts initiatives, as well as our Sharp 2 initiatives, and there were great opportunities for getting involvements from the states and learning abilities on what different strategies that are out there. Furthermore, with these PACs, we meet two or three times a year. Uh, we get together and look at what are some of the things that we need to do uh, we need to put our funding toward, because that's very important. And the first part was pavement preservation in urban environments. That was, uh, that was kicked off about a couple of years ago. It's ongoing. But oftentimes, in a lot of the urban settings, we wanted to get some information on what are they doing, and not just looking at what different types of treatments, but what are they dealing with when it comes to work zone, safety, what other treatments, uh, staging areas, looking at all those different things that make it important to them and why they choose their preservation treatments. In addition, um, we need to look at more at wrap in our, in our pavement preservation treatments. Using that existing material, and again, this goes with sustainability, using that existing wrap material and putting it into our chip seals. We might be able to save some of the asphalt that we're using and not use as much, and again, that's a sustainability effort. And furthermore, we're also working on developing additional trainings with combination treatments. Furthermore, we got an NHI course that we're working on. We had a benchmark study that we did a couple years ago. And in that benchmark study, we surveyed 50 states. And it came back that training wasn't as big as we would have thought that states really needed. But they wanted more design and inspection information. How did they design those treatments? It can be internal, in-house, but oftentimes these preservation treatments are done with their maintenance forces, outside sources, contractors, whatever it might be, but they need to have some kind of understanding. How do they go about designing those? We all know that ISSA has the mixed design criteria and all those things. That's wonderful, but again, we've got to look back and educate those designers and what are the certain site selections that they need to do to put these preservation treatments down so they don't go bad and give us a bad taste in our mouth when it comes to preservation treatments. And then along with that, um, we wanted, I really, I was very happy to see we were able to get some peer exchanges this last May uh, in Atlanta as well as in Denver, Colorado, where we were able to get uh, at least 45 agencies to sit in and talk about some of the troubles and some of the issues that arise when it comes to preservation. And we're looking forward to having a report out here very soon. Furthermore, updating our NHI course on leveraging and managed management systems. That's just starting. The contract has been awarded, and we're looking forward to moving that as well. In addition, the fundamentals of payment management. I talked about Tuesday about the fundamentals. I keep getting calls as agencies, payment management people either retire or move on. Folks are wanting more information on payment management, and this is a great course. It's very inexpensive for those people coming on board to learn more about some of the terminologies, some of the things that payment management systems need to have. And then lastly, for the last four years, Federal Highway has sponsored state DOTs to go to the asphalt, our ISSA slurry systems workshop. And this year, again, we are gonna help agencies go to this. Uh, the dates are January 15th to January 19th. So as you're a state and you have 
participants that would be interested in going, please feel free to contact myself um, or Antonio Neves on getting your name onto the list to attend this workshop. If you like what we did yesterday, you're going to like this workshop even better. Furthermore, over the last year and a half, I've been working with our local assistance program on creating uh, some kind of training for the local agencies, as well as the tribal agencies for paven preservation. Um, and sometimes they've been just knocking on my door to come and come and come and teach these courses, but here's just another way of providing this e-course then for them to take, as well as be incorporated a little bit of payment management toward the end to where it all ties together and we're, and we're looking forward to having that come out within the next month, so stay tuned. And then lastly, uh, one of the things that we agreed to for this next year as a proposal is really looking at the cyclic approaches of pavement preservation. Our agency is really looking at a five-year commitment on what treatments are being done, or is it just going by the maintenance department or whatever? Oh, we have this much money. What do the districts want to use for preservation? And that's a different approach. We need to get more in tune of what the planning of these preservation projects are, because we do it with rehab, why are we not doing it with preservation? So in addition, um, here's just some of the things I want to talk about in the local agency training. This is kind of where it starts off by identifying distresses, and we've all been there. It gives some idea how to look at type, severity, and extent. And at the bottom, also includes a survey, a bunch of forms that local agencies can use to have a better understanding of how to go about doing that. In addition, as you can see on the far left, it covers the cracking, the surface deformation, the disintegration, surface death, defects, joint defects. It goes into all those aspects to give them a better understanding of why these cracks are appearing on our roadways. Then once they do that, then they come back to this table where then they can take what types of distresses that they've learned and they can look at which is the best treatment to apply on that particular roadway. And that kind of brings it all together, which has been a kind of a great thing, the tool. I have to say, David and those guys that did R26, great job on putting some of this together because these are the things that are really helpful. Furthermore, we can't say enough about our key stakeholders, uh, sponsoring agencies, ASHPO, the Emulsion Task Force, and others that have really, really contributed over the years and have been beneficial, as well as the industry organizations. Working together, like yesterday, putting out these treatments really makes a difference. And then last but not least, the academics. Helping educate the younger generation to move up and get a better understanding of what preservation is. In addition, we have a focus. We want to really convey the key challenges and observations from the value of pavement preservation throughout the communities. What can we do to make it better? And then with this pavement preservation technical feedback group, uh, we met last week in Washington, D.C. Um, really, it's just to get together on what things that we can do as we move forward um, to help the agencies, the industry, whatever it may be, to improve these efforts as we go forward. In addition, we had opportunities. What do we want to focus on? Expand the knowledge and experience, similar to these workshops. Work on demonstrating the benefits, the pool fund studies, the other things that show what we're seeing in North Dakota, putting these projects down, showing that good pay, uh, you, know, you know, putting these good uh, preservation treatments on, extend our lives to these payments. That was what we really want to show and showcase. Encourage the agencies to become more payment preservation oriented. We can't say enough of that. And again, when we kicked off Everyday Counts 4, we were really hoping to get more agencies providing some kind of strategic plan, but we didn't really see many and hopefully in the future that maybe will happen. And then we also want to foster collaboration, cooperation between our partnerships. Furthermore, we do have a mission, like most, is to preserving our national highway system. And then our objective is to help the agencies strategically consider and implement these pavement preservations in a data-driven, systematic manner to optimize pavement performance. Those were key words that we wanted to uh, dictate and we wanted to use. Now we're going to go into different strategies of how we're going to do each one of these. Our first strategy is to explore and disseminate pavement preservation fundamentals. We have all seen the checklist. They have been useful. 
But then again, where do we need to go further? And again, that's where we used our benchmark study, which hopefully in a year or less it'll be finalized. We really wanted to get your in input on where we needed to go and where we needed to follow up more with our funding. Explore impact current programs, uh, look at benefits of preservation and, do and identify what those gaps are. Where do we need to focus more on? As I mentioned earlier, training wasn't one of them. It was more to get the agencies to really put these projects in their backyard. And that's where the pool fund really makes a difference. You know, we can focus on uh, different data-driven uh, processes that will help the agencies, but agencies just need to put these preservation treatments in their backyard so they understand what all is involved with these treatments, and that's where they're going to learn. Furthermore, increased payment preservation understanding, education, reference materials, and so forth. And again, for those that haven't seen it, we've updated our website, and we're very happy, uh, Tony, for doing this. In there, you can find different resources, technical bulletins, but I want to really focus on the technical bulletin one part that we did on Everyday Accounts um, 4, and where our HOW group uh, with certain individuals, Larry Galehouse as well as Larry, have really worked on these tech briefs. And these tech briefs were discussed a little bit on the first day. These tech briefs provide a lot of useful information. A lot of effort went into these on what are the benefits, what are the agencies are using for preservation. And I'm not sure many people know about this. And they really need to look into this because there's a lot of useful information. Furthermore, let's look at strategy two, encourage effective payment preservation programs. Develop and deploy payment tools. Construction and inspection training, that's what we're gonna focus on within the next year and a half. Identify preservation considerations during payment design. And then we wanna integrate those through our performance management and our asset management process. The next key success, when we talked about inspection, and, um, and design, I really felt that uh, the key success for a payment preservation program is being proactive with the contractor and the owner. Having those discussions early on, why is payment preservation important and what site selection of putting these treatments down should be done, as well as following standard test methods that are out there, um, keeping up with the slurry trucks and tracking the loads of the material, very important. Um, being prepared to keep testing equipment clean, because when, not, when they're not clean, that just causes more problems. And then provide the contractor a clear direction in situations that, that may immediately change their work uh, role out there on the projects. But that communication between the contractor and agency are very important. And for those agencies that have been very successful with preservation, they've had a good key communication with the contractor. Furthermore, when it comes to project inspection, let's start off by talking about preparation. Very key. In some, doing product inspection, making sure you're taking the samples of the emulsion and also verifying the appropriate type of the materials that are being used on the job. Um, is the proper operation of the equipment on site? Is the aggregate spread rate being verified? Is the set time being verified? All those things play a major role. In addition, I can't say enough, what are we doing when it comes to aggregate quality summary? Are we looking at durability? Are we looking at soundness? I get phone calls on sand equivalency, um, how that could affect their microservicing of their projects. Very key, consistency and segregation. Next comes the field sampling fabrication. What does an agency need to do when it comes to field sampling? Do we need to do it at all? Well. It, we need to, and then we also need to also make sure that the parking and fabrication locations are identified up ahead. They're not going right back onto our preservation treatment, as well as the equipment, communication, and the pump mill operations are all being done to make sure that operation is being properly done. Pulling field samples, you know, safety, we all know that's important, but also ob obtain them directly from the mixture discharge. Not at, the, uh, not at the plant. Uh, typical obtain two samples of the mixer from the separator loader and per shift. Very important. Knowing the types of tests that are needed. We all know most of us, 
Wet track abrasion is probably the most common, but what about the aggregate testing, the sieve, the sand equivalency, and others? And consistency testing, residual asphalt and water content sampling, all make the very important aspects that need to be looked at. I'll get off that, now we'll go to strategy three. We want to make sure we facilitate strategic payment research efforts. We don't want to stop at just looking at identifying uh, policies and training and guidance. We also want to look at research efforts. And here I mentioned uh, we had a research roadmap that was developed two or three years ago. Down at the bottom of the page, there is a site through Chico State. Now there is a where if you want to go into and look at what preservation research activities for pavement preservation are out there, you look at this site and it can provide you the latest and the greatest on these research activities. And efficient coordination uh, on these programs are important. And I can't say over COVID, um, we, didn't, we didn't stand at home and doing nothing. Uh, with the help of PPRA, we were very successful going out there and providing webinars, um, and they were very successful. And if you look at PPRA's site, you can see some of those webinars that were very useful and very helpful and moving on. Lastly, we want to talk about, now we have our strategies, how do they go back into our, our measurable outcomes? And there's just a few that dictate, you'll see the benchmark study, developing matrices, lead transportation pool funds, and initiate some research projects as we talked about. The next steps is to share what we're doing so hopefully other agencies can start developing some kind of plans too for their programs. Um, we're also gonna update this strategic plan as we move forward. And we wanna continue to carry out activities and implement our plan as we move. Lastly, as was talked about right prior to me, this was a big effort that I really wanted to get out the door because it basically, it was developed and then we just didn't have enough funding to move forward. But this pool fund effort, 1581, I think it's a great opportunity for agencies to be a part of, be able to get money, and hopefully, as an agency, you can tell Joel Olring and the others, what are some of the things that you really want to get out of this pool fund? Maybe it's not looking at just the data, the life cycle, and all that other stuff. Maybe it's just more of a focus on putting some treatments down that you have never put on your roadway before and see how long they, how long they last. I think that's very important. Moving on, here's some of the contact people from our headquarters office, myself, and research that has worked together on this. And then here's our website with the QR code uh, for further information. So I leave you for any other questions. Yes. What does the acronym PACT stand for? I don't understand. PACT stands for Program Area Collaboration Team. P A C T. 